Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I thought I'd explain a little about the second chakra and empathy and uh, the, the rise and fall of the waves of sexual desire all over the world. And we've touched on this topic many times. But this is just a further like insight about it with regard to empaths. You know, of all the chakras old style that we have of the first seven chakras that used to be in human form um, the most reactive I feel to the unconscious thought cloud of the world is the second chakra the sexual chakra and uh, so the minute a person begins to feel sexual then to that chakra are are attracted many uh, thought forms d laden with desire from other people so so and these thought forms that that are so uh, strong and so um, so out overweight amongst the chakra system have to do with the mass media that I've also discussed many times and the emphasis in the mass media on the second chakra including billboards and television and um, movies to name a few um, I believe all light workers are empaths and that many people in the healing professions and the spiritual counseling professions are empaths and the medical professions I think and the psychological and psychiatric professions are frequently empaths um, these people feel uh, have a tendency to feel the chakric um, uh, patterning of the people that they're with whether it be one person that's with them in a physical sense or a whole group of people um, so uh, if if a person especially let's say young people younger people whose endocrine system is different from uh, more more robust than that of older people if if an empath is with uh, people with very robust endocrine systems uh, they they tend to reflect the same pattern uh, in their in their chakric system as they're experiencing from that other person or those other people in a group so so what happens then is that because in much of the world uh, there's there are many taboos around the act of sex and thoughts of sex and so forth when the other person um, like subconsciously hears the clear chatter that, that has actually been transferred from them to the empath they re, they uh, tend to react with the same social censure messages or malware messages that they heard from their parents when they were very young before the age of reason so so when this uh, like negative malware impacts the um, the patterning of the mimic pattern patterning of the of the empath then then uh, it ratchets it ratchets that energy in a negative sense back to the sender and and then if the if the empath doesn't uh, like transmute or transform that energy with love then that then the racket grows and grows into um, a kind of a maelstrom of negative sexual energy no don't do that no don't do that no don't think that who are you and then a bunch of negative derogatory terms and uh, sentences start being um, slung back and forth about uh, alternate lifestyles and so for instance okay here's a good example say a, a female light worker is around a young a female a young woman who has a strong sex drive right and that and that young woman feels very strong uh, like feeling of, of, of sex accompanied by uh, the usual right the usual for a heterosexual person then the light worker the the empath who is he's female too such as myself uh, patterns that and 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 the 
the young person then throws back, how dare you, you know? How dare you have that feeling towards me? Which is a big embarrassment for the light worker or the empath who also has uh, thoughts about the social, like, aptness of various thoughts, right? So she, she might react with an, either um, uh, no, I didn't, or with how dare you, or with transmuting with love and light, right? Those are some of the options. And so if, if the last option is not picked, then it starts to ratchet up. And in an establishment, everybody in the establishment gets, suddenly gets involved in, you know, alternate lifestyles and so forth. So, um, or if it's a man, you know, it, the same thing might happen. See, the patterning that happens on the sexual chakra for an empath is not sexually specific. It merely reflects the malware or like what they call automatic response mechanisms uh, deeply buried in the subconscious mind, repressed energies of the person that they're with. Whether they're with a man or a woman, it'll still reflect, you know, whatever that other person. Of course, their response might vary depending on the gender of the other person, but, and especially in a large group or crowd, it's like a, a melee, you know, one person will one person will have a sexual feeling. Another person, and, and then the, the light worker or, or empath notices that plus the energies of all the other people in the room regarding, regarding that and all the other chakras, right? But, but the sexual chakra is a very strong, loud feeling because of all the repressed, repressed energies because of early childhood learning, right? Very loud. It's one of the first that people experience when they start to awaken is all the naysaying regarding sexuality in the world, right? So, so everybody in the room before long starts to hear uh, a din about sexuality, right? And, and, and it varies very much. Some people are saying, you know, they're saying, would you have, it? it's their familiar line that they have if it's man sometimes. It's, could I have a date with you, dear, dear woman? Or like that, or it might be very explicit instead. And they repeat this over and over again whenever the sexual vibe in a room arises without actually knowing that they're doing it. But the person that they're sitting with notices it and thinks that they're coming on to somebody else in the room, perhaps the new person, the empath, the light worker, right? And so that person starts up very indignantly about how their man is being preempted by somebody who's an outsider to the group. And the light worker is going, oh my goodness, what should I do? You know, <laughs> what could I do about this? And, and so then somebody else picks up, somebody who has an interest in an alternate lifestyle, and they have a different, like, song to sing and a different uh, energy to add to the group. And, and it continues on. It can go all around a room in different directions, or it can rise into one uproar. I know of one gathering that I attended one time where a man and a wife led the group, and it happened every once in a while. And the woman had soul wounding to do with, um, she, probably in her adolescence, she had a sister who took her boyfriend away from her and, and, and scotched her on that. And she never forgave her. You know, it was maybe first love and here was her sister ruining her life. And, and this was something that sank deep down into her subconscious mind. I don't know that that's so, but this explanation would explain that behavior. So she and her husband led, right? And, and I, as an emp a very s sensitive empath, was in the group, right? And, and I had no designs on the either of them, but, but there was a strong energy of sexual repression in the group. And as soon as she thought, um, a sexual thought, uh, it would ricochet over to me and she would immediately, in, her soul wounding would be engaged so that she would think I was after her man. It's like, you know, it's, it's like, oh my goodness, what should I do now? And, and because they were in a leadership position, she began a chant that, that um, over and over again in her, in her conscious mind, she started to hear this, this chant that had to do with naysaying or, or extreme anger about other people 
daring to have a sexual thought about her husband. And it got to the point after a meeting or two when I couldn't go back there because she was planning in advance, whether subconsciously or consciously, planning this campaign of like the scarlet letter for me, you know, as the most sensitive person in the Ed group of very sensitive people. The other people didn't know what to do. Nobody knows what to do at this point, right? So, um, so we're all experimenting. Those of us that are rising to consciousness in this regard are all experimenting with ways to assist in alleviating soul wounding responses, automatic responses when we gather in groups so that the groups can continue in a harmonious way as the ascension conti process continues. Uh, I just thought I'd mention this um, because it's frequently misconstrued. And, uh, and I urge all of you who are now at the conscious level, of which there are many, many in Los Angeles, many, 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 to, to, to try to think of a way to transmute these negative energies about sexuality to the light through your own heart center, through the energies of the group, or through some small action on the astral or physical plane, such as a kind word, that will help to, to switch, to twist the energy that's being expressed um, from the negative to the positive. Uh, I expect coming, coming into the um, solstice of June in the next month that, that many more techniques will begin to manifest. Uh, for the last day or so, what I've been trying uh, in regard to all forms of negativity that I uh, encounter on the Claire plane, telepathic plane, is to say to every new voice that I hear, I say, may you be blessed with unconditional love. And I'm ratcheting down from entities, although when entities are, seem to be involved, I, I speak to them as well. Uh, but mostly it's people, so I, I've been trying this with a certain amount of success. Um, so, it's a possibility to try that in the situation just mentioned. Just thought I'd throw that out. There will probably be many other possibilities coming up. I expect the men to contribute quite a lot to this because, because of cultural uh, expectations, in, at least in the United States, in America, uh, men have to put their best foot forward as regards sexual attraction, even if they get a lot of like uh, rejections. Uh, from people that they try to, to uh, that they hope to date, from women that they hope to date, for instance. Um, so, so they might be in a more robust position to, to, to think of ways to, to counter the negativity that they sense on the astral plane as they rise to that understanding and as they rise to an understanding of their multi-dimensional and multi-temporal skills, uh, they may help the entire group of a mixed group of both men and women. They may also help teach the children how to change this, uh, possibly with light humor. I've seen that done or with tall tales sometimes in some regions. Um, so a kind of um, a laid-back, uh, easy-going way of dealing with negativity, rejection, and societal expectations that run counter to the way that things actually are. So, and and many such ideas are very helpful that are coming from men right now. So, there's a couple more things that came to my mind regarding this topic. One is the uh, Lilith. Uh, the Lilith syndrome that I mentioned early on some years back um, it has to do with the third woman you know the evil women the dance hall girl and as compared to the wife and social attitudes towards that and I recommend that to you that you take a look at that blog um, because uh, you, sometimes you can identify uh, cultural patterns in the way that the the newospheric energies move, um, and that's one. That's a, it's called the the Lilith, the the fallen woman, right? And a man will treat um, a woman he perceives as Lilith quite differently from the woman that he's married to. And, and this reflects in the newospheric energies that occur. So sometimes that can be identified and, 
maybe there'll be a fix. <laughs> maybe they'll, maybe we'll come up with something. Um, then there's the antisocial personality uh, contribution to the area of sexuality, and this must be dealt with with a co completely neutral mind. Um, this is one of the cases where um, may you be blessed with unconditional love helps because it, it posits a third party doing the blessing, whether it's God, whether it's your celestial ascension team. There's a visualization here of a third party that confers the unconditional love. And that's very important because otherwise the antisocial personality will latch on to your um, sex drive and onto your uh, heart chakra and drain them, uh, uh, drain the heart chakra with constant stimulation of the sexual chakra uh, at the same time. And so, and there's also a question of mind control that occurs as the energy field of the empath weakens because of the atypical um, energy configuration of the electromagnetic field of the antisocial personality. That's very important to make that distinction. Um, then there's the question of the ratchet up of the, uh, uh, of the in a group situation of the uh, sexual energy field. This is when uh, the people in the group are pro-sex. Um, not necessarily at that moment, but in general, their orientation is pro-sex, right? And so, one person has a, has a yen, has a feeling, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to find a sexual partner, or just a, a feeling, gee, is anybody out there for me, you know, and sexually like that. Now, for the empath, the telepath at this point, um, one thing to do is to stabilize the personal electromagnetic field. And I've offered many different methods of doing this, whether mudras, hand positions, or visualizations, or meditations, or just in general uh, diet and uh, getting plenty of rest and so forth. There are a lot of different ways to, to make the uh, electromagnetic field very strong. And so I suggest at this point utilizing whatever is at hand to enhance and strengthen the, uh, the personal electromagnetic field. Then what happens when this person's uh, thought form impinges on your own energy field is that it, the, the energy field acts as a neutral barrier. And the, um, the same energy with which the uh, thought form hit the energy barrier, it causes it to like boomerang off of it and back to the person and they send it into other people in the room. And so when your energy field is down, some of the people in the room or maybe all of the people in the room will begin to feel uh, uncomfortably sexual. That's because in general in groups, even though they may be pro the notion of sexuality and avant-garde in that matter, they don't believe in like in, in like uh, suddenly taking advantage of, of that desire in a group situation. And so the people will become very antsy. And my only thing that I can say about that right now is it's important to exit the, the geographic vicinity as soon as possible for the empath. It's very important to, to go away from that, um, that group glom and allow the people to ratchet, ratchet down without the, the um, boomerang effect of your own energy uh, field shield. Then as to the case of a person who, uh, an empath who finds himself in a group, whether on the physical plane or just associated with, uh, um, on the astral plane with a group that is very negatively inclined towards sex, that always believes that sex should be um, repressed. For example, a group of celibate people or a group of people that, that learned in early childhood, like Puritan people, you know, who had a very strong notion that sexuality should only be used in specific situations, say for the perpetuation of the species, and that it must be repressed at all of those people who have a very strong view along those lines. I've even run into spiritual adepts who who um, 
do psychic surgery on the the lay people that support them to prevent them fr by cutting the spinal column around the level of the the narrow part of the waist psychically to prevent them from feeling sexual okay uh, um, and as this has been discussed in other blogs what this eventually leads to is soul devolution because it uh, it leads to an injury called the snapping of the silver thread or um, uh, which separates the the higher triad the higher mental body from the from the lower quaternary including the lower mental mind so uh, so the, the the body vehicle the subtle bodies become no more no longer suitable for uh, Mm, insolment. It's called insolment. The, the soul to settle down onto. But leaving this interesting footnote to one side, let us take up the the issue of of the the light worker empath who finds him, himself or herself in the company of people who are extremely ascetic with regard to sex. Uh, whether they be n n trained to emphasize their higher mental faculties or whether through psychic surgery they be prevented from feeling their natural sexual urges. Then what happens when the um, empath lowers the electromagnetic field uh, barrier and become stable in their energy is a is a is a ratcheting back and forth a boomerang effect of those people's negative sexual thoughts um, back and forth to the group so that the group grows more and more um, sternly uh, chaotically even disinclined towards the act of sex and so this this feeling of like negativity towards the act of sex amongst such a group uh, if, if, the, if the light worker or empath has this very strong electromagnetic field shield can turn into hatred of men or hatred of women hatred of people that are perceived as sex objects um, and so it can actually lead to acts of violence and so forth and so it's very important for the um, the empath with a strong EMF shield to exit from such a group. And I say probably permanently, and uh, to to find a group that's more copacetic as far as sexual views are concerned. This will let the um, this will let the the other group gravitate to the type of sexual energy that they prefer. I wish you all God's love and grace and joy in this time of the highest light in a, in a year that is the solar minimum. It should be interesting.